Hi, I'm Judy Tayabji. Thanks for joining us today. And if you're wondering, what is she wearing? I'm wearing my fish pants today. And the reason I am is because we have a guest who's going to talk to us about this subject under the heading of leisure. As you know, we've talked about gardening. We've covered some hobbies. And Lee McKenzie did her books, books, books. And today we're going to talk about fishing. And more importantly, we're going to talk about a book that's come up called Warped Rods and Squeaky Reels. The author is Robert Jones. And he goes by the name sometimes of Bob Jones. And he's going to talk to us about this. And I think we have a story about fishing, so let's take a look about, at that. Hi. Oh, we don't. Okay, well, there you go. <laughs> Lee McKenzie's over there choking on her pop. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back with Bob Jones and your calls. Yeah, good one. Tayabshi is brought to you in part by CFAX 1070, Victoria's news authority. We want to show people where Snapple first came from. Ideas, anyone? How about a tour? From this cooler in 1987 came the very first Snapple. Now remember, at that time, no one had ever made an all-natural blend of fruit flavors and real brewed teas before, making Snapple the first alternative beverage. Es gibt nichts besseres als Schnapple. Thanks for the idea. You and Snapple, making the best stuff on earth even better. My dad and I built boats on the stream. A lot of fish back then. Never dreamed it'd be my job to restore it so more salmon will come back. These logs look like they've been here forever, but my crew moved them here last August. It's something I wanted Angus to see. This stream kind of runs in the family. We're creating thousands of new forest jobs for British Columbians. People like Lloyd Burroughs are the future of our forest economy. It's a new day in the forest. Aluminum isn't mined in BC. It's made by people. People who import raw materials and turn them into a metal that is exported around the world. People who continue to find new uses in new markets that help grow our economy. People who've made aluminum an element of BC. When you pick up a Times columnist, receive one air mile. One of the most popular leisure pastimes in this province is fishing. Saltwater fishing, freshwater fishing, creeks, rivers, you name it. And one very funny author who happens to live on Vancouver Island up in Courtney is Robert Jones. He's written Warped Rods and Squeaky Reels. He'll join us today and first we'll start off, we'll talk a little bit about the book. And uh, thanks for joining us. Well, thank you for having me. Do you want to be called Robert Jones no, or Bob? Bob. Bob, the Bobster? Okay. And people can call you about all kinds of stuff. That's right. All right. And you wrote a first book. Now, let me just plug your first book. Tangled Lines and Patched Waders was the Outdoor Writers of Canada Award for Best Book in 1996. Yes. That's pretty good. Yeah. You have to pay the judges? <laughs> I don't even know who they were. <laughs> oh, really? That's great. And that was, how many books have you written on fishing? Uh, I've actually been involved with writing about uh, close to a dozen. Wow. Uh, as co-author. Right. And uh, three on my own, and then. And this is the yep. second one by Horstall and yep. Schubert. Now, on this one, I had to. I went through this. It, there are some very funny scenes that you have here, <laughs> and one like Revenge of the Dogfish. Now, a dogfish, if you've ever fished in salt waters, it, they're easy to catch. Right. right, and there. Um, oh, and there's the easy. book, Warp Rods and Squeaky Reels. There's the last one that I caught, right okay, there. Okay, well, just I don't think the viewers <laughs> can see that. You've got it. What is that? A scar? Yeah, just that was last Wednesday. Oh, that's, that's <laughs> something. So now, dogfish, they look like they're a type of shark. Yep. And in this one, you describe how a friend of yours, you're, sh you're, you're fishing with him, he catches one, and you to get his lure back, you cut the head off, and that's then and then tell us what happens. Well, what. What happened, and this was in the old days when I used to do this, we're right. going back uh, over 30 years ago. Okay. The fellow that I was fishing with was uh, Ken Hampson. He was a medical officer in the Air Force. Nickname was Doc. Right. And he had a very uh, well-developed 
sense of curiosity about everything. Right. And uh, when he hooked this dogfish, we were fishing off of Comox Spit, he, uh, I cut the head off the fish because I wanted to get the, the hooks back. Right. And he said, uh, let me see that. And I looked at him and I said, well, here. But I said, just be careful. I mean, it can still bite. Even though it's just a head. Yeah. Yeah. So I never thought any more of it. I'm busy rigging up another uh, cut plug herring. And I hear him, well, I'll be damned. <laughs> oh, oh. And I said, what? He said, it's biting me. <laughs> and he's got it hanging off his thumb. <laughs> this dogfish head. That's awful. And then you yeah. said, why did you put your fingers in there? Yeah, he said, well, I wanted to feel how sharp the teeth were. And he found out. And now I know. <laughs> now, the other thing that you have in here is you, uh, you used to test bait. Yeah. So for people who are fishing who want to know about bait, the best baits. You actually tested one and it's funny because you say there was a modern line that appeared in the late 70s and early 80s and you tested one that said revolutionize fishing. Yep. So why don't you tell us about lots, that? Lots of exclamation marks. Right, right. Very <laughs> fancy packaging. Oh yeah, yeah. And uh, like I still test lures. It right. just goes with the turf. But uh, this particular one I was uh, in Ottawa fishing in, in the Rideau River and uh, I tried it under ideal conditions. I knew the water very well. Right. And uh, I finally caught a tiny little rock bass about this big and I had hooked it right in the anus. Not the mouth. Not the mouth. So when I finally wrote a report back to the lure company, I explained to them that after hours of fishing with their marvelous lure that I had caught one fish, told them where I had caught it, and I said possibly the fish was just trying to make a statement about their lure. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you're saying here that they didn't contact you to test no, any more no, of their I've, lures they've, after they've that. They've never got back to me. <laughs> no. Now, something that a lot of people are concerned about too on fishing is things like conservation. So mm -hmm. I was actually quite pleased that in your book, you tell a story, and I have to tell you, I, like I used to fish when I was little, but I don't anymore. I, just, I, I can't do it anymore. But um, in here you actually talk about you and a friend named Crony, mm -hmm. and you're at a river, and there's a very big steelhead. Yeah. Uh, actually, it's a creek, I guess, is it? It's uh, sort of a kind of a stream. It's, yeah. it's mid-island. Yeah. I won't reveal it. Okay. Don't want to give away your best spot. But there was a 15-pound steelhead there that yeah. you could see because of the conditions. It was all of that. And, and you talk about how beautiful this is, and I go, oh, no, and now we're going to hear about how he kills it. And then you ask your friend, where's the, the hen or the wife or the mom or whatever yeah. it is? Well, and it was actually the other way around. Oh, okay. The, uh, we saw the hen first. Okay. And she was... She was pretty close to 20 pounds. And, and that was, and, they were just about to spawn. And I said, where's, where's, the, where's the buck? Right. And he said, you know, look back about 30 feet. And, there and it is. B because the water was so clear. Right. You know, uh, it was just, and all the rocks in the water were, were uh, all these different colors and Sparkling whatnot. Sparkling and stuff, yeah. You know, and it was just like they were, they were hovering. But I couldn't see the buck because he was tucked into a shadow in the rock. And then right. I finally spotted him. But... Uh, yeah, they were just beautiful fish. Now, in a case like that, you actually said, I don't want to split up such a nice marriage. And you left them. Mm -hmm. And you walked away. Yep. And you say something in here, well, we'll come back in four years when there's, you know, 20 of them or something. Yeah. Well, that's nice. I mean, how many fishermen actually do you think are responsible enough to walk away from two fish like that? Quite a few. So you think that yep. they're in, interested in conservation, yep. too? Sure they are. Hmm. That's something that people... More and more. Do. Every, you know, every year we're getting better and better at it. Now, just on this, although it's sort of peripheral, you actually live up island, and I know for a lot of the people who live up island, they've talked about the island highway and some of the problems mm -hmm. with the rivers. What would you say, you've been fishing for, you know, 30, 40 years or longer, what do you say about the quality of, of uh, fishing on the island or even uh, on the lower mainland? Oh, it's dropped. It's, it's yeah. just, you know, they've had to close half a dozen rivers. They've had to close them? On the east coast. Yeah. Uh, for steelhead fishing, sure. Right. No, it's 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 pretty dismal. Yeah. It's well, a combination of loss of habitat, uh, the explosion of the seals in Strait of Georgia. Oh, you think the seals are taking well, quite a bit? They of definitely sound? are. It's, it's a proven fact. Uh, yeah. We've we've lost uh, we've lost almost an entire run of everything in the Puntledge River. Right. Because of uh, greatly in part of seals. I mean, they're not 100 percent of the problem, but they're certainly a a big, a big part, part of, it. of it. And then that becomes controversial if uh, oh, some fishermen say, well, shoot, the seals are cull, they call it culling, but they, yeah. you know, yikes. Anyway, there's some people who want to talk to you, and there's a couple of young boys as well mm -hmm, who want to talk great. to you, and we're ready to go to the phone lines. Let's start with Tyler in Salt Spring Island. Hi, Tyler. Hi. Hi, go ahead. Um, <laughs> I caught 60 fish in St. Mary's Lake 60? in one day. 60? Yeah. Did you have a license? Yep. Oh, that's good. 
So, and, and how, what kind of fish? Uh, smallmouth bass. Okay. And, and do you know You're, where St. Mary's Lake is? I sure do. Okay, well, that's, that's it's, interesting. Uh, Thanks, in fact, St. Mary's uh, and Quinell Lake, uh, just outside, south of Nanaimo, are probably two of the best smallmouth bass lakes. And so when he says he caught 60 in one day, that's a lot. But how big were they? Oh, well, no, and I, I had him on the line. I, I was actually going to let you ask him, and you didn't. So now in a case like that, um, I mean, obviously, the smallmouth bass, those are good for eating. I'm they, assuming. they are, yeah. They're, See, they're, I gotta th forgive me. I'm from the interior, so rainbow trout, I know. Yeah. All this ocean and stuff, and I'm not sure. And of yeah. course, those are lakes too, but they don't have uh, smallmouth yeah. bass. Well, there's there. some smallmouth, largemouth bass lakes up in the in the uh, South Okanagan too. Oh, do they? Oh, yep. they Vaso Lake, Osuyas. In fact, in Okanagan Lake, they've got smallmouth now. Oh, they've they got, moved in there. Oh, have they? Yep. Oh, okay, I don't remember that. Let's talk to Blake now in Port Coquitlam. Hi, Blake. Hi. Hi. Go ahead. Um, I'm 11 years old, and um, do I need a license for fishing? Okay. What kind of fishing? Things like in the ocean. Okay. He, he's 11, and he wants to know if he needs a license for fishing. No, you don't need a license. Uh, they don't need one at all? No, not, not oh, uh, if that. you're under, uh, I think it's 16, but don't quote me on that. Okay. It's, uh, it's been a while since I've had to worry about getting kids' licenses. Right. But... Uh, yeah, uh, depend whereabouts was he calling from? He's calling from Port Coquitlam, and he wants to go fishing on the ocean. Ooh, well, uh, Port Coquitlam, uh, the closest is going to be uh, off Vancouver waterfront in that area, out toward House Sound, and the fishing is starting to get a lot better out there now. Right. They've cleaned up the pulp mills and how how sound quite a bit. I mean, it's probably still got a lot a lot more to do, but it is it is picking up there. But uh, it's yeah, amazing that, how pollution will affect the fish. Ooh. And uh, you've not, seen a lot not, of that too, I not, bet. Not just the fish, it's all the shellfish oh, too. And well, not to mention human consumption. Yeah. I mean, there's so many things that spin off from that. Let's talk to Steve now in Victoria. Hi, Steve. Hi, how are you? Fine, thanks. Uh, a question, Bob. I'd like to know uh, what your feelings are on the Saanich Inlet. Um, I'm a 35-year-old uh, person. I was born and raised right on the waterfront. I know uh, Jimmy Gilbert quite well. Actually, I worked for him on mm -hmm. uh, wharfs. We used to uh, go across on a rowboat to Todd Inlet and uh, snag uh, springs that were, uh, you know, anywhere from 15 to 40 pounds. Okay, and you want to know what he thinks about fishing on the Sandwich Inlet right now? Yeah, like it, okay. it's declined such, like so much. I just... Uh, yeah, it has. Okay, well, and thanks for that question. It's, uh, it's unfortunate. I have never fished Sandwich Inlet myself, uh, but, uh, you know, I'm pretty aware of what's going on there. Uh, from the newspapers and uh, radio shows and whatnot. Uh, I think, really, you know, Saanich Inlet uh, is a classic example of an area, as far as I'm concerned, that should be for recreational purposes only. Mm -hmm. Instead uh, of... And I'll probably get all the prawn fishermen mad at me and whatnot, but... Because right. <laughs> so, that would be so commercial be use then. Yeah. But there's a constant uh, fight that goes on between recreational and commercial fishers uh, right up and down the coastline. You're not even one of the big... If you talk, if you talk about sport fishing, yeah. I mean, com where, where they're making a lot of money on bringing in people from other countries, that's a huge battle. Yeah, but I, I think my, my point with Saanich Inlet is the fact that it's close to a major uh, metropolitan area. And, you know, as a recreational playground and whatnot. Uh, right. It would be well suited for that. Hmm. We're going to have to come to a conclusion somewhere along the line. Like, I lived in Germany for seven years. I did two tours over there with the Air Force. Right. And they learned very, very quickly over there because of their population that, that people want recreational areas where they can go and have a chance to catch a fish. Right. Especially close to where they're living. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's talk to Joe now in Surrey. Hi, Joe. Hi there. Hi. Go ahead. Um, I was just curious um, what you thought of the banjo lure. You see it on TV all the time, and I was just wondering if it was a big crock or whether <laughs> The banjo it lure. Yeah, okay, well, that's a good question. <laughs> I'm not familiar with that's it. Is it, it a, a drift jig? Or? Um, it's like supposed to be this like uh, revolutionary um, <laughs> minnow-looking thing, and it's supposed to um, um, attract all these fish. Okay, well, that's a good, it's, a, it's a good question to just ask you. How often do televised revolutionary lures actually pan out? Some of them actually do. And, and how do I, you know? Do they have, like, longevity? You see them selling uh, on the store shelves, I guess. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Uh, I can't come up with a name of one right now, but uh, there's a, 
Oh, well, primarily because I don't have television set in my house. Okay. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so, Very earthy of you, Jim. Well, there, I um, threw it out about 30 years ago yeah. and went back to reading uh, books. You're on TV? <laughs> oh, yeah, I've been on television quite a few times, yeah, no, Japanese I'm just television. But <laughs> I'm just saying. Uh, okay, now we're going to take a quick break. We'll be back after a break with more of your calls, and we're talking to Bob Jones. He's the author of Warped Rods and Squeaky Reels, and I'm going to talk to him about that TV thing. <laughs> <laughs> Tayab She is brought to you in part by Metro Lexus Toyota, leaders in customer satisfaction. Norm! More cheese? Sure. Oops. Ooh. Relax. That's a mess made for bounty. Oh, you'll need a lot more than one sheet to pick that up. Think so? Let's experiment. Using wet towels, my quilted bounty versus the leading ordinary nine-inch brand. Let's make a mess. Think you can get yours to the garbage? Uh, sure. Oh. Nice mess. Now, watch how strong and absorbent Bounty is. See? You can't mess with Bounty. Bounty, the quilted picker up -off. Disney's masterpiece, Fun and Fancy Free, is coming to video, and we're celebrating. For a limited time, get a $5 refund when you purchase Disney's Fun and Fancy Free on video and two of these products. It's sure to make this summer fun and magical for the entire family. Well, Thrifty Foods has great organic produce. This is a good host, uh, lemon iced tea. It's the best. Canadians know how to make iced tea. I, all through my college years, this is all I drank. Dole pineapple juice. It's 100% juice and it's unsweetened. After lunch, <laughs> juice is always good for the kids. Smile to me, for you. Vancouver Island's homegrown food store. Foods. So many of us. So few answers. So much suicide. I'm someone, but no one cares. I'm fighting for my life. Why do you stand there and watch me drown in my despair? Schizophrenia is a disease that needs to be understood. Get involved. I'm still bugging him about the TV thing. I'm saying, for this show alone, you should buy a TV. Okay, uh, let's go back to the lines and start with Cindy in Port Alberni. Hi, Cindy. Hello. Hi, go ahead. Um, hi, Bob. Hi, Judy. Hi. hi. I was just wondering, um, my brother, he's teasing me, and he always says that fish have teeth, and I'd like to know if it's true. <laughs> okay. What was this? Fish. Ha she says her brother teases her and says that fish have teeth, but she doesn't know if that's yes, true. Yes, they certainly do. Yeah. In fact, uh, you get into some species like the dogfish, yeah. the shining example of, uh, you know, they are a shark, their teeth aren't big, but there's thousands of them. And they're two rows? And, no, there's several rows. Oh, really? And they, they all face in, right? so that they get a real tearing motion. Do all fish have teeth, or just, because I, no, well, I know the, the mouth on some you can see. You get into a fish like a sturgeon, they, they don't have teeth, they, they use uh, their muscles in their throat mm. to crush. Uh, mollusks and whatnot. Almost like a snake or something. Mm -hmm. Let's talk to Wes now in Salt Spring. Hi, Wes. Hello, Judy. Hi, go ahead. Judy, thanks a lot for including this, uh, this topic in your usual segment. <laughs> no problem. Now, I just couldn't pass up the opportunity to uh, tell Mr. Jones how much I enjoy uh, your articles in BC Outdoors Monthly. There you go. Well, thank Both, you. I look forward to them. Are they funny? Oh, they're great. Yeah, because his book is very funny. Entertaining, educational, the whole bit. Oh, good. And uh, I moved out here from out east about five years ago, right. mainly for the fishing and the environment. Right. And I'm um, just... Mainly for the fishing environment? That's it. Aha. Uh -huh. That's yeah. it. The well, outdoors, the fresh air, the lack of <laughs> people, right. the whole bit. <laughs> That's right. So I'd just like to take this opportunity to invite Mr. Jones down to Salt Spring Island to fish not only St. Mary's, but some of the other excellent top-producing lakes we have here. Okay, thank you for the Love call. Love to take you up you on it. There you go. <laughs> You'll have to look him up. That was Wes. So you, it's all spring on what, there's two people living there? <laughs> no, I'm just joking. They wish, probably. Okay, let's talk to Al now in Fanny Bay. Hi, Al. Hi. Hi, go ahead. 
Hello, Bob. Hi. Bob, in answer to that young fellow's question about whether he needed a license, yeah. Yeah. He, he, he doesn't need to have one on him, but at the age of 16 and under, there's no charge for well, that. Well, that's that how it goes. That's how it says on my license. So yeah. he needs a piece of paper is what you're saying. You've got to have one of those on you when the fisheries come and look. Okay. I, sh I should have looked in my wallet. <laughs> I know, I know, and I've done it a thousand times. I wasn't even sure of the age. Okay. And listen, thanks for being on the show and talking about it, and uh, thanks for letting us know that there are a lot of others out there. Can I, can I ask you a question? Yes, you may. Have you ever uh, entered a Chinook on the Lingcod portion of your license? <laughs> this, is, uh, this is a real fisherman show. Well, Fisher show. because I mainly catch and release, <laughs> yeah. I haven't... <laughs> Okay. Well, I had to, many, I had to I ask. In the right column for sure. I had to ask because I've done it myself, Thanks and just about much, everybody Al. I've talked to has done it. Well, you know, fisheries officers do watch this show. They're going to be coming after you now, Bob, and it'll be all my fault. Okay, let's talk to Sharon now in Port. Oh, Mer I'm next. Oh, yeah, you're next. Go ahead, Sharon. You're on the air. Oh, uh, hi, Bob. Hi. Um, I'm going to Hefley Lake this weekend to fish, and I was just wondering what type of bait I should be using. Okay. It's in the interior. Yeah. Um. Is there a specific bait that that um, you know popular at this time of the year? Well, this this time of the year, uh, everything's late up in the interior. Uh, normally, this time of year, the the fish would really be in the doldrums, and you'd probably do your best your best fishing uh, with a troll. Uh, not you don't necessarily need the big long gang trolls or anything, but just uh, trolling a spinner with a a fly, like a carry special, uh, behind it, or bait, if you so desire, or a small flatfish, this sort but of thing. But you're still saying, don't expect them to be leaping out of the lake into your Well, boat. everything's about three weeks late up there this year, so they, they might uh, still be up fairly close to the surface. Okay. That's but your best bet is to fish early in the morning, late in the evening, and just okay. ask around, see what, what the other people are doing. Okay, and then now we're going to hear from Bob in Abbotsford. Hi, Bob. Hi, how are you? I'm fine, thanks. Go ahead. Uh, Bob and I are little buddies from a long time ago, and I just want to let him know that I just came in from the Chehalis, where I caught a, I just beached and got in my sink a 35-pounder. Hey, a 35-pound fish? Yes. It's a probably the last one. Red, red spring. <laughs> wow. Is that right? You betcha. <laughs> Thanks for that call, Bob. Just for your information, your book is great, <laughs> and the river is low, but clear and there's lots of fish in there. <laughs> Great to hear Thanks from you. Thanks for that, Bob. And by the way, oh. uh, I know what you uh, you have a bane against uh, television, but my good wife has taped this and we'll send you a copy. Oh, oh isn't you. that nice? That's, Thanks, that's, Bob. <laughs> that's, that's Bob Cummings. Okay, so that was Bob Nassar. He used to be my boss in the Air Force. Did he? Yeah. Two Bobs. Two Bobs. Bob the boss, Bob the boss. Okay, and, and that, uh, Sharon was from Port Moody. I don't think I had told and you about that. you were concerned that there weren't any women phoning in. Well, we got like Two. Anyway, well. <laughs> okay, let's talk to Alex in Mission. Hi, Alex. Are you there? Yeah. Okay, your turn. It's a, it's, a, it's a delay, so you have to listen to your phone, not your TV. Okay, I can give you a couple seconds more. Alex? Yeah? Okay, you got to go right now. Go with um, you. You're on what, the air. <clears throat> what's the best thing to fish for um, in the Mission area? Oh, good in question. In the Litton area? Mission. Mission area. He's in Mission. How old are you, Alex? Eight. Eight. I mean nine. Oh, nine. Oh, good question. I have a little boy who's nine. Okay. Uh, what I would suggest you do is, is uh, go down to the one of your local tackle shops, because I don't really know the mission area that well. I used to live out around Aldergrove, and all the fishing I did there was forbidden. <laughs> but, what uh, are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I was, like, I was, I was don't come after me. <laughs> <laughs> I was 14 years old before I caught a legal fish. <laughs> and so this little guy, this is a little Alex out in Mission. Alex, do not do as he's done. <laughs> go, down, go down to your local tackle shop and talk to the people that work there because they, they will put you on to where to go and what you should be fishing with. Okay, let's talk to Terry in Delta now. Hi, Terry. Hi, um, go ahead. Javi. I'd like to talk to Bob. Okay. I have a little problem. I just, pardon? Yeah, go ahead. Um, I just uh, come off the uh, Fraser River up at Gill Street Bar in Chilliwack, and I noticed this two years ago over on the Stamp River. There is people, adults, men mostly, that are fishing. Uh, one woman, I might, might add, uh, one woman, one woman, and all the people, they're fishing over their limit. Yep. Mm -hmm. Now they're 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 saying, well, we're fishing for my husband, 
<laughs> or fishing for my grandmother, my grandfather. I think it should be the same thing as a, uh, as a steelhead. Once you catch your limit, you should have to stand down and let those people catch their own fish. Okay, I thank you very much. I have to cut them off there because we're running out of time. So I can't agree with them more, but yeah. that's uh, a lot of that problem is because uh, they have gutted the environment people. So there's no conservation officers. We have officers. no conservation officers. That's a huge just, uh, issue, yep. you know, and, and not just for fishing, but for uh, any kind of wildlife management. Yep. So you're finding there's a lot of people taking more than their cat that sure. they're supposed you to. Sure, hear about it all the time. Hey, the classic example of the old fellow from Alberta. Right. Who, okay, as far well, as I'm concerned, should have just, they should have thrown him in jail. The guy we saw on the news, yeah. yeah. Okay, well, you didn't see him on the news. <laughs> no, we saw him I heard him. Yeah, that's right. Okay, <laughs> we're going to uh, show you the book and then take a quick break. The book is called Warp Rods and Squeaky Reels. Robert H. Jones is the author. Horstall and Schubert published that, and we'll be back after a quick break. This portion of Tyabji is brought to you by Pacific Opera Victoria. A and W root beer. Since 1919, that smooth, creamy, frosty mug taste has defined the perfect root beer moment. That's what makes it Canada's number one root beer, and that's what makes it the only one to reach for. A and W root beer. You have to go through that every time. Diet in double your root beer. thinking about doing a little home improvement. Oh, honey, please, no. Not today. No, Dad! Please? Not that kind of home improvement. This. It's called Family First, and you can have a free copy by calling this toll-free number. Family First can help you learn ways to communicate better, solve problems, and spend quality time together. Where'd you get all the ideas? Oh, well, you know, I just, From uh... From this free video, Family First. <laughs> Dad! Family First is full of suggestions for real home improvement. Ideas that can help your family be closer and happier. Best of all, it's free. It's a gift from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. All you have to do is call this toll-free number. You've got nothing to lose, so give it a try. It was July 21st, 1871 when British Columbia stopped being a Crown Colony and joined the Confederation of Canada. We celebrate this on the BC Day Long Weekend and we'll be talking about the details on this on Tuesday's show. Today we were talking about fishing and we had Bob Jones with us, an excellent guest on this subject, but a lot of uh, very important points were raised by the viewers. Of course, we know that there are problems with people catching more than their limit. We also know that there are problems with not enough conservation officers, but we should be safeguarding this because that's one of the reasons people move to this province. I'm Judy Tayabji and that's my opinion. Have a great weekend. <laughs>
God. What, what, what if Ben is inside one of those caves? If anyone is inside one of those caves, they're buried by now. Buried as in dead? Oh, my God, I never meant for anyone to get hurt. Especially not Ben. I can't remember a time when I didn't love Ben Evans. I loved him first, but he married my best friend, Maria. When she died, I was there for him. And he's always been there for me in every way but one.